Okay, welcome into our first video of Math 264. Uh, calculus 2, I guess, but it will be a blend of Calc 2 and Calc 3. So we'll jump right into it. Our very first topic is going to be parametric equations. So we'll write that up here. Oof. Parametric and I'll abbreviate equations. And so the idea here is, right, we've been using functions, just typical y of x, right? But what we're going to utilize now is we're going to say that we're going to let x be a function of t, so we're adding in this other variable t here. And same thing with y is another function of t. And so maybe you're asking, why do we need this? Why are we going to add in this extra variable t? Well, let's think about uh, an idea here. If we have some shape that looks like this blob, right, and we want to perform calculus on it, well, what is the issue that we run into it? Well, it's not a function, right, because it doesn't pass the vertical line test, right? So as far as performing calculus, it's going to make that very difficult to do. Um, so we introduce this new variable t, where we have it, right, normally we think of t as time. Right, so this is the issue, this is why we're introducing parametric equations, and we're going to jump right into it with an example. All right, so let's go ahead, we're going to take two equations here. We'll say, so example one, we're going to say x is equal to, let's do t squared minus 2t. Sure, I think that's fine. t squared minus 2t, yes. And we'll do y is equal to t plus 1. All right. So just to get used to these equations, what we're going to do is we want to plot some points. And so and you'll notice that this follows kind of the same way your homework goes over it. We'll use x, y, and t to form triples. Now the t here is, you can think of that as the free variable. I can pick whatever t's I want. I'm just going to pick 0, 1, 2, and 3. Right, your homework, I think, wants four points, so we'll do four points here. Now, as far as y and x on how we're going to compute these, all we're doing is we're plugging in t into each one of these. Now, notice the y is pretty easy, right? Some t plus 1, so this will be 1, this will be 2, 3, and 4. And your x's here, we have a little bit of work to do. If we plug in 0, we'll get 0. And again, we're plugging in the t's, not the y's. If we plug in 1, we'll get negative 1. If we plug in 2, we get 0. And if we plug in 3, we'll get 3 squared, 9 minus 6, 3. All right, so first part, we have our four points. Might be a good idea for us to try to graph this and see what it looks like. Now, maybe some of you are wondering, we have three points there, right? Or three, right, a three-dimensional triplet. And so how are we going to graph that in two dimensions? Let's only focus on the x and y. We'll talk about how we're going to bring this t back in in a second. So 0, 1, we'll put a point. Uh, negative 1, 2, I know it's a little not totally aligned there. Negative 1 and 2, we'll put a point over here. 0 and 3. And finally 3, 1, 2, 3, and 4, we'll put it up here. And so we'll connect all these points. Let's assume it goes the same way. Right, and now we have something that looks like this sideways parabola. So that takes care of the x and y's, but let's not forget about t's here. Right, what do these t's tell us? Well, the t's tell us directions. So we want to know what's happening, our arrows, and I'll show you what I mean by arrows in a second, what's happening as t increases. Right, and so that's why I start with zero and I just go up. Right, what is the direction that we're following? So if I started at 0, I start at 0, 1, and then I go to negative 1, 2. So I'm traveling in this direction. Right, so the t is going to give us this extra element of knowing the direction that we are traveling. Good? Okay, so again, just getting used to plugging it in, we went ahead and plotted. The arrows are the direction that we are following as t increases. Right, so as t increases, which way are we going? In this case, we're going that way, right? Okay, so we have these two pieces. Our next piece is maybe we want to write this as a function with just x's and y's. How do we do that? 
Now notice here that we don't really want to write it as y of x. Why? Because this isn't, right, this isn't really a function. So we're going to write it as a function of x, or a function of y, I should say. All right, so what we need to manipulate, we're going to leave this as such, because we're going to end up plugging values into this t and this t, which means we need to solve for t over here. And this isn't too difficult, right? If we move the one to the other side, we'll get t is equal to y minus one. Right, just moving that one to the other side. So now, if we want to write this with just x's and y's, we have x is equal to, instead of writing t, we write y minus one squared minus two times y minus one. And now you can go ahead, all right, we can simplify this. I think derivative will take it just as is, but if we want to go ahead and just, what is that, two y plus one minus two y plus two. So we end up with x is equal to, combine like terms, y squared minus four y, I think if I did everything right, plus one, plus two, so plus three. Awesome. So we end up with this, right, parab sideways parabola here. And that is it, right? Now the other thing we want to take note is if we have any domain issues, in this case are there any y values that I can plug in, but that's not the case, right? We have nothing, so you can just write none in that section. So again, just working on plugging in the different points, how do we graph it, right? We're, we're graphing the x and y, but we can't forget about the t. The t is giving us important information as far as what direction we're traveling. Now, when we switch to x's and y's here, we do lose out on that information, so it is helpful to draw it in that graph so we know. Okay, so that takes care of example one. We're gonna come back to example two. We're gonna do something very similar. Uh, we'll bring up a different relationship with some trig rules to kind of refresh on that as well. So I will see you in example two. Okay, welcome back. We're gonna do a very similar type of problem, but we're gonna reintroduce our favorite trig. I need to get used to trig again. So example two, and you'll see it show up over there, hopefully. Maybe it's down there, I don't know where I'm gonna put it yet. Um, we'll say x is equal to sine of t, and we'll say y is equal to one minus cosine of t, and we'll go ahead and limit t to be between zero and two pi, so one full revolution. All right, and same thing, so step one, let's just get used to plugging in some points again. So we have our x's, we have our y's, we have our t's, and you can pick out whatever t's you want. I'm gonna pick zero, pi over two, pi, and we'll do three pi over two. So we do need to be familiar with that trig circle. And so now we'll do x first. If I plug in zero, I get zero. If I plug in pi, I get zero. If I plug in pi over two, I get one. If I plug in three pi over two, I get negative one. All right, so not that bad. Now let's look at y. If I plug in zero, I get one, but one minus one will again be another zero. If I plug in pi over two, I'll get one minus zero. If I plug in pi, I'll have one minus negative one, positive two, and if I plug in three pi over two, again, I'll get one. So we have four points here. Maybe if we see sine and cosine, the shape of our graph should seem somewhat familiar in our head. Let's go ahead, make a little graph here. Again, the x and y's are what we're plotting, so we'll start off with our zero, zero. We have one, one. We have zero, two. We have a negative one, one. Right, and so I know I didn't do the greatest job. Let's see. That's not bad. All right, what do we have? We have a circle. Right, well, how do, what else do we need to do here before I forget? X's and Y's, what about our T? That's telling us the direction we're traveling. So we're going from zero, zero to one, one. So we're traveling this way. From one, one to zero, two. Zero, two to one, or negative one, one. 
and we will probably continue this way. Okay, so we have our points, we have our graph. What if we want to relate this in just x's and y's? What do we do? Okay, well, what do we know about a circle? We know sine squared of t plus cosine squared of t is equal to 1, right? Equation of a circle. So again, we want to get rid of the t's, and we just want to be left with x's and y's. Well, luckily for us, right, well, we have an x is equal to sine of t, which means that x squared is equal to sine squared of t. All right, so that part's done. What about the other part? We have y is equal to 1 minus cosine of t, which means we also know that cosine of t is equal to 1 minus y. And from this, if we square both sides, we have cosine squared of t is equal to 1 minus y quantity squared. And so we'll put a star by the information that we need here, right? Because all we're doing is making some substitutions now for sine and cosine squared. And so our last equation here, just making the substitution, is we'll get x squared plus 1 minus y squared is equal to 1, right? We're just substituting sine squared is equal to x squared. Cosine squared is equal to 1 minus y squared. We've substituted it all out, and we're done. Right? We have our equation in terms of x's and y's. And now the question that we kind of need to ask ourselves is do we have any domain issues? Is there anything we can't plug in, any restrictions? And no, we can plug in whatever we want. All right, so in other words, you are good to go. Uh, we're going to be restricted, obviously, to the x, y points along that circle, but that's about it. So other than that, that is all I have for example two. Okay, welcome back to the next section. So where we finally introduce some calculus. Now, we introduce one rule. This is coming from the chain rule, right? We want to solve for dy dx, right? Remember, this is known as the slope of the tangent line. You could, I'll write that here. Slope of tangent line, also known as instantaneous rate of change, etc. right? Derivative, uh, maybe you've known, maybe the y prime is the normal thing that you're used to. But now since we've introduced parametric equations, well, how do we find this with parametric equations? And I mean, it's semi-intuitive that you would take dy dt and just divide it by dx dt. I mean, this is just coming from the chain rule. Uh, but we're not really adding anything new. This is just an equation, but you could think about it in terms of fractions just intuitively, even though it's not perfectly correct, but the dt's kind of cancel each other out. Right, so moving forward, when we do an example, we're going to tie this into Another idea that we learned about in our net last semester is that we want to find the equation of the tangent line. So find the equation of tangent line. And in that case, I need to give you some parametric equations and also a value of t, right? So let's say x is going to be equal to, um, I believe I have it t cubed plus 1 and y is going to be equal to, let's do t to the fourth plus t. And let's do at time is equal to negative one, since that makes sense. Okay, so find the equation of a tangent line. For a tangent line, what do we need? We need the slope, so we have a method of finding that. We also need a point, but we have our xy coordinates here. So we have a way of finding the slope, we have a way of finding the point, we should be okay. You can do either one first. I'm going to do the slope first. Let's get rid of the calculus part. So I know ooh, dy dt, there we go. Uh, yeah, I'll just do each piece separately. Is equal to 4t cubed plus 1. And dx dt, we'll just put that like that, uh, is equal to what? 3t squared. And now if we plug in negative 1, so at t is equal to negative 1, what do we get? We're going to get negative 4 plus 1 
All right, so we'll just put some uh, negative 4 plus 1, negative 3. Over 3 is equal to negative 1. All right, so we can box that. This is our slope, right, of our tangent line. So we have the slope. Let's go find our point now, but we can just find our point by plugging in this value of negative 1. All right, we just got to plug it into each one of these x and y to get our coordinated x at y. So x is equal to negative 1 cubed, negative 1 plus 1, 0. y is equal to negative 1 to the fourth, positive 1, plus negative 1, also 0. What a nice point to work with. And now recalling back from, uh, this is back from algebra days, point slope. Right? We have a point, we have a slope, point slope. So we'll do y minus y1, which is 0. And I know this is easy to solve in our head, but just to exaggerate the point, times m, which is our instantaneous rate of change, or slope of our tangent line, times x minus x1, which is also 0. So this will simplify down to just y is equal to negative x. And that is it. That is the tangent line at t is equal to negative 1. And that is it, right? So <clears throat> notice the different parts of this, right? This is the only thing new that we've added here. And it's not that big of a concept to add. The only difference is what are we going to have to know or remember from our previous class? It's all of our different ways to take derivatives. Notice here that we just use the power rule. Power rule is the first rule that we learned in derivatives, so it's not too bad. But as we move forward, right, we're going to need to recall the product rule, the quotient rule, the chain rule, all of our fun rules that we have. So this is it for example three. Did I put example three? We'll hide it up here. Example three. Uh, we have one more example in this video. We're going to go through another problem just like this, except we're going to make finding our derivatives a little bit more challenging. All right, until the next example, I will see you for you in about two seconds. Okay, last example for this video. So example four, same idea we did in our previous example, uh, EX number four. And we're gonna find the equation of a tangent line. Hopefully I put it the example somewhere. But let's go ahead, X is equal to E to the T, sine of pi T. Right, and remember, we're going to be dealing with derivatives, so think about this as we're writing it. Right, we have a, a function times a function, right, so product rule. And here we have something else going on, chain rule. Right, so again, an e to the 2t, so another chain rule. So again, if we're not too familiar with our derivatives or we're not in good practice, right, this problem is going to be harder than it should be, right, if we don't have the foundation laid already. Now, oh, let's do at t is equal to 0. All right, so we're going to find the equation of a tangent line at t is equal to 0 using these parametric equations. So again, a reminder, dy dx is equal to dy dt over dx dt. All right, so let's go ahead. dy dt, not too bad. We have a chain rule, right? So this is 2 e to the 2t divided by dx dt. Well, what is this? This is a product rule with a chain rule over here, but we'll start off with the product rule. So derivative of the first stays e to the t. Second function stays the same. Plus, now our next one, right? First function stays the same. And derivative of the outside function is going to be cosine. Derivative of the inside function is just going to be that pi. Now, we can simplify this. All right, I'll give you a second to write that down. We can simplify this by pulling out an e to the t, and that's all good and fine, but there's no need to really do that. Zero, let's look at this piece here. e to the zero is going to be one. e to the 0 will be 1 times pi. Cosine of 0 will also be 1. So 1 times pi times 1, pi. 
And so we end up with just 2 over pi. So again, what are we trying to do collectively? I know the problem somewhere. I put it somewhere here where it fits. Um, we're trying to find the equation of a tangent line. And for that, we need two things. Good news is we found the more difficult one. We found the slope right, of our tangent line. The next thing we need to do is find our x and y points. So x here is equal to, we have e to the 0, but then it's sine of 0. And this is just going to be 0. And we also have y is equal to e times e to the 0 again, which is just going to be 1. So we have a point, 0, 1. We have a slope, m is equal to 2 over pi. Point, point, slope. We use point slope. We have y minus y1, 1, is equal to 2 over pi x minus x1, which is 0. And we can simplify this. Right, we just get y is equal to 2 over pi x plus 1, and we are done.